Hey everyone, welcome to Mythology Explained. In today's video, we are going to discuss Tithonus, a man cursed with immortality, but not with agelessness, so there was no limit to how frail and feeble he could become, deteriorating endlessly. Let's get into it. Barring people condemned to unending torture in Tartarus, perhaps no one, with the exception of Prometheus, suffered more greatly than Tithonus, be they man, monster, or god. And if he wasn't the person that endured the most suffering, he's certainly on a short list of top contenders. Life should have been joyous for him, as he started out with every advantage a person could hope for, being of well-bred stock, both royal and divine. Indeed, his pedigree was impeccable. Laomedon, king of Troy, was his father, and Strimo, daughter of the river god Scamander, was his mother. You might remember Scamander from the Iliad. Achilles provoked Scamander's ire by clogging his waters with corpses, which culminated into a morbid, sodden dam that impeded his flow. Scamander then unleashed his might against Achilles, and were it not for other gods intervening, the hero would have been battered and drowned, left dead after the raging rapids had ceased their attack and receded. Another tie-in with the Iliad is that Priam, who ruled as king of Troy, was Tithonus's younger brother. Now, you might think that Tithonus's plight was connected to the Trojan War, but this wasn't the case. He became ensnared in his predicament before the drums of war announced the imminent arrival of 1,000 Greek ships slicing through the surf, set to punch their hulls into the sands of the Trojan coast. Tithonus caught the eye of a goddess. She was called Eos, Aurora to the Romans, goddess of the dawn. Tithonus was said to have been exceptionally handsome, and his lean-muscled body and comely countenance caught Eos's eye. And since Greek mythology is absolutely rife with instances of beautiful women noticed by lecherous gods, peppering in a few mortal men to be preyed on seems only fair. Eos had garnered a wanton reputation, setting her sights on, then stalking, seizing, and whisking away handsome men. She abducted Cephalus, who desperately desired to be returned to his wife, but this enraged Eos, precipitating a series of events that led to the death of his wife at his own hands. Orion, the giant hunter, was also taken by Eos. Eos became so infatuated with her newly procured lover that she wished to preserve him, keeping him hale and handsome forever. Of course, the only way for this to be achieved was for Tithonus to gain immortality. So Eos sought out Zeus and beseeched the king of the gods to use his power, unmatched as it was, and change the essence of Tithonus's being so that the frailty of mortality would be replaced by imperishable immortality. Zeus readily agreed and promptly granted her request, doing as she asked. Here, the moral of the story, which can be succinctly summed up by the well-worn phrase, be careful what you wish for, abruptly makes its entrance, barging in. You see, Zeus was so quick to act because he recognized the folly in what was asked of him. Eos never stipulated that Tithonus should be kept young forever, only made immortal, condemning her fine, fit lover to a fate worse than death, which was deterioration without end. For a time, while Tithonus retained his youth, they lived near the river Oceanus, the great river that encircled the world, enjoying each other with the voracious appetite of young lovers. Unfortunately, because Eos's besiegement of Zeus was sorely lacking in specificity, Tithonus's looks were lacking in longevity. Even the most beautiful flower wilts and withers after its bloom and its time in the sun. Time took its toll, and when the nimbus of youth around Tithonus began to fade, Eos no longer allowed him to enter her chambers to share her bed. She didn't banish him from her presence, but their intimacy as lovers had run its course. Because Tithonus was an immortal who could physically age, there was no limit to how decrepit he could become. He became so feeble that he couldn't move. He lost his faculties so that all he could do was babble inanely. Eos sequestered him, locking him in a room where, in solitude, he perpetually deteriorated. After centuries, there was nothing left of his body, only a remnant of his broken mind that made unintelligible chirping noises. In some versions, he became a cicada, and the noises made by the lingering fragments of his mind were the sharp din made by them. In addition to Tithonus's unending suffering and constant decay, there were a couple of children that came from his time with Eos. They had two sons, Amathian and Memnon, though unfortunately, 
they were cut down by Greek heroes. Amathian, a king of Arabia, was killed by Hercules, and Memnon, king of the Ethiopians, was killed by Achilles during the Trojan War. And that's it for this video. If you enjoy the content, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.